Fuller's meeting with Minister of Foreign Affairs Wilfred Errington was set for 11 this morning, and within 15 minutes he walked out a free man, his life given back to him. It could have gone either way, since Errington had heard and refused an application to him once before. But the news was all good for Fuller and his family. After I had given the first decision on the 20th of September 2011, that was successfully appealed against. The Court of Appeal was very, very clear in its judgment and decision and gave me very good guidelines as to what were my powers and gave me examples of how those powers were in fact exercised in the judicial sphere as well as by uh, Secretary of State in the United Kingdom so that on this second occasion when I had occasion to revisit the matter I was able to apply those guidance that were given as well as guidance which I got from other decisions of Commonwealth courts touching on the matter of extradition. While those guidelines were no doubt integral to his decision, Ellington says he gave great weight to the argument that Fuller's children would suffer if extradition was granted. The thing that influenced me most of all was really the impact which the extradition would have had on the children. There's his, he has three children. And the last one, Gabriela, is a young girl who is seriously autistic, really. And the indications are that there is no proper medical care that she can access here in Belize. The care is expensive. And of course, we in Belize don't have, unfortunately, the social safety net that you find in other countries whereby if you're not employed, you can get assistance from the government either through social security or such other services. And um, it was evident to me that in fact, if the father was sent back, the children would have a very difficult time. Already, given the length of this time, um, the children are already suffering. The affidavit evidence was to the fact that the mother and the children are now living with relatives. The business which they had, two business which they had, really are down to almost the last leg now. Fuller has been in and out of prison during the 15 years fighting extradition. Most recently, he was granted bail in 2009 pending a hearing at the Privy Council. When the Privy Council refused his appeal, his bail was revoked and he was remanded in 2011. The application before Minister Ellington was quite literally his last resort. I was also mindful of the fact that um, this has taken an inordinately long time. I don't think there has been another case that has taken such a long time to be resolved. It's almost quarter of a century, 25 years. It's 24 years almost since he has been going through this. I don't think that the system um, should be so slow and dilatory in getting justice. Uh, justice denied, delayed is justice denied. And this is a classic case of justice delayed. With Uncle Sam turned away at the door at the 11th hour, it is unlikely that the news will be greeted with happy feelings. But Errington says he was obligated to make the decision he did, and the U.S. will just have to respect that. The United States is a country which also believes in the rule of law, and the United States believes that one should act in accordance with one's laws. I am acting fully in accordance with our law. I mean, um, and I have made that very, very clear so that they should understand that. They and their judiciary should understand that. And their, their executive, they should understand that. I can't see that having any, any adverse effect on our relationship with the United States. We have a good relationship with them, and we want to continue to have a good relationship with them. But I was legally bound to do what I did. When I had made the decision uh, last in 2011, the court looked at it and said, no, you did not exercise your obligation. I have an obligation to exercise, and I must exercise it broadly. I'm not to limit it. According to Errington, when he ruled against Fuller in 2011, he was basing his decision on Fuller alone. This time, he also considered the impacts to his family and to Belize. Mike Rodon for News 5.